And then one other benefit would be bill of material and change management. And, and vault manufacturing has that ability to manage a bill of materials, which is different than a parts list. A bill of material is really what would be sent to a client or a customer. And a parts list is really what gets modeled in CAD. And that bomb might contain information that we wouldn't model. It could be packaging materials. Maybe it's a pallet. Maybe it's shrink wrap, whatever. We're able to modify a bill of material and add non-standard or non-drawn CAD information. We also have a formalized process to manage changes. Uh, unfortunately, in this demonstration, we're not going to get into that. That will happen in the next one. Uh, but again, we do have a formal process to manage those changes. So you, you've heard me um, talk about a few of the different products here. And, and they are scalable. And there's four products that are available. And I'm not going to go into the differences. Hopefully, you can read through here and see what the capabilities are. But you'll see they're very scalable. You know, so if you wanted to start with Autodesk Vault and then slowly move into some of the other products, they are scalable. And the process to do that is very simple. It's just a simple upgrade that happens on your server and, and on the clients. And then you're ready to use the next product. Um, so you may hear, hear the term cross-grade, um, where you can cross-grade from Autodesk Vault to Vault Collaboration very simply um, if, that, if that's a situation that, that needs to happen in your environment. But again, there are different features that are available for each of those products based on your needs. Um, this is readily available from the Autodesk websites. You can certainly go there. Um, if there's inf information or if you want to get this from me, you can send me an email. I'll provide that at the end. And I can send you a PDF of those as well. And any sales individual from Master Graphics would be able to provide this as well. So what we're going to do next is provide a demonstration. So what I wanted to do is kind of talk about what the demonstration is going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is, is we're going to search for information. And, and Vault is very powerful in that type of scenario where we're using a, an SQL database to search information. So basically Vault can search a million records in seconds, whereas Windows Explorer doesn't have the capability or the ability to really look into your data. And I'll talk about that a little bit further in a minute. Once we find some information, the next thing we're going to do is evaluate and understand that data. Really, what, where is it used? What do we want to do with it? What are the relationships and so forth? Once we understand that information, we're going to do a copy design. So we're going to replicate an assembly and, and reuse some information within that assembly so that we're not creating duplicate parts within our Autodesk Vault. And without, without a DM application, that can happen. And you can have a lot of duplicate parts within your installation, and it becomes very difficult to know which part is the correct one being used in all the assemblies you have within your environment. Once we've duplicated and reused that, that assembly, you can kind of see the little guy over here, we're going to replace it. So we've got a larger assembly that this is used in, and we're going to replace it with this new design. Once we're finished, we're going to update the corresponding documentation. Uh, what you will, will notice in the demonstration is I won't have to draw any of the assembly documentation over again. Just by opening up the document and hitting Update, all the changes I've made to the new assembly are going to be automated. And then finally, the last and most important piece to this is I'm going to secure that information by checking it into Vault. So what we'll do is, is we'll move into that demonstration in a second. But I wanted to talk about some terminology you're going to hear me kind of mention throughout the demonstration. And the first one is iProperties. Uh, for those of you using Inventor, iProperties are, are the, is the data contained within the files, your assemblies, your parts, your drawings. That could be an example could be a description, a part number, material, revision. That information is indexed into Autodesk Vault and becomes searchable. And this is an, all, an automatic process. Another example might be, for those AutoCAD users out there, would be block attributes. We have the ability in Autodesk Vault to index those block attributes into our database so that they're searchable and ultimately editable if that's something you wanted to do. All that information, those I properties and those block attributes, on the database side of things is called metadata. And metadata is really all that information that, that is part of your CAD files. Um, there may also be some metadata of Word documents, where we can index Word documents into the database as well. 
Um, you'll hear me term the, the vault client, and, and uh, you may also hear, hear it called a thick client. We have a thin client, which is the web-based client, and we have a thick client, which allows users to do higher-end operations like check-in and check-out functionality. Uh, the vault client is available um, with the, the AutoCAD and Inventor and AutoCAD Electrical. Um, with vault workgroup collaboration and manufacturing, that client can run as a standalone application, which means you don't have to have any CAD on your machine to run that client. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, for those of you that may not be familiar with DWF, DWFs are something that, that is truly an Autodesk format. Um, the term stands for design web format. And basically, they're created on check-in. So every time I check in a document, a DWIF is automatically created. And that DWIF is important because that's the viewable file I'm going to be looking at in that Vault client. It's a very lightweight file format. Um, typically, the ratio might be about one-tenth the size of the original CAD file. And that has a lot of benefits. Um, that can benefit you if you're emailing documentation a lot and collaborating with individuals outside your organization. DWIS can be a mechanism to really send information to them, and you're not sending them your CAD files, your intellectual property. All you're really sending them is a read-only file, and then if they downloaded a freely available application called Design Review, they will be able to mark up anything that they may see as an error or maybe some, some changes they wanted to make. But that collaboration can happen very easily with Design Review, and you don't have to send your CAD files to those individuals. So, so those are some of the terminology we're going to be talking about um, inside the demonstration. So I'm going to move into the demonstration. So let me just escape out of here. I apologize. I'm going to have to switch some screens. And what I want to talk about real quick, hold on here, there we go, is kind of an overview of the Vault client. And what you're seeing in front of you now, I'm running Vault Manufacturing. Um, it doesn't really matter for the demonstration. You're going to be seeing a lot of just core vault tools. But again, I'm running vault manufacturing. And what you're going to see here is, is something that looks a lot like Microsoft Outlook. So this is your first time seeing the vault client. What we have over here on the left-hand side is really that product structure we mentioned earlier, where we can organize data in a logical manner. And that really varies depending upon the client. It could be... Um, organized by customer. It could be organized by vendor. Maybe it's by project. Vault can support any type of logical organization that you want to create. Um, in those folders, as I click on a file, you'll see it shows me data over here on the right-hand side. So it's showing me the information that's contained within those files. I think everybody on this call has probably used Windows Explorer. This would almost be like Windows Explorer on steroids, where I'm getting a lot more information than what Windows Explorer can show me. And, and we'll dig into really what that information is in, in a second. Um, down here at the bottom that we have support for shortcuts. That's really nice, uh, especially when you start using Inventor and AutoCAD. Um, but I can get to data a lot quicker. Or maybe I don't know where it's located, so I can create a project folder of shortcuts and organize my work very effectively. When I select a file, um, I'm shown some more information down here at the bottom. And you can see here that, that I'm looking at a file, and it's showing me some property information about that file. We're, we're going to dig into that area a little bit deeper, um, a little bit later in the demonstration. So what I want to do is kind of show you um, some information about what we're going to be doing in the demonstration. So I'm going to open up a file here. <clears throat> 